The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. It is a beautiful, beautiful morning, isn't it? And what a great crowd that we have. I'm excited today. I don't know if you are or not, but we've got a lot of people that have been out for a period of time, and now you're back with us. And I'm thankful for those that have uh, been out with sickness or different difficulties and so many people have been able to come this morning. I've also seen a number of visitors, a lot of folks that are visiting with us. We want you to know you're our honored guest. We're glad that you're here. Uh, if you're looking for a church home, we would love for you to consider Southgate. As we come together this morning, we're beginning this month a, a, new, a new series for the next about five weeks. We're going to be looking at this idea of walking with God. One of the things that Natalie and I love to do is going for a walk. Uh, again, as you think about going out, people talk about getting together, going for a walk at different times. You know, obviously it's good for exercise. You can get out there and you can exercise a little bit. But there's something about just being together for a period of time where you spend time where there's no other distractions except just taking in nature, seeing what's going on, and spending time together. Whenever you go on a hike with somebody, whenever you spend time with someone, there is a closeness that takes place. And really, I think that's what we've ended up enjoying more than anything else, is time to be together. You see that in a number of different things in life. When people go on a walk, when they go through a period of time together, maybe it's a ball team, and what do they do after all those weeks and those months of practice together? You've got a closeness. You've got this together and this that happens because you've been together for such a long period of time. Think about those that have been in the military and they go to boot camp and they go on a lot of long walks, don't they? Or a lot of long hikes or a lot of uh, long jogs. And what happens? They experience life together and they are creating closeness. You see that. Why? Because in all those different situations, whenever you start to get closer to someone, they learn that they can rely on each other, that they can trust each other, that they can count on each other because of what they have been through together. Well, in Scripture, we see that God wants to walk with us. Have you thought about that? That the creator of this world wants to walk through life with you. As you read through Scripture, a number of different places, you'll see that type of terminology used where God is saying, look, I want to share life together. If you looked in Genesis chapter 3, you see that God is walking in the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day. And what was he looking for? He was looking for Adam and Eve. Now, they had sinned, and because of that sin that had separated them, they were hiding. But what's God doing? He's coming through in the middle of the day. And you imagine before sin had entered into the world, that was something where God would be walking through in the cool of the day. And there would be Adam and Eve where they could be together. That's what God wanted. Ultimately, at the end of all time, what does God want? He wants us to be together again with him. Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, you see a very unique individual. It says that Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. What an amazing idea. That he sat there and he was walking through life and he knew who God was and he was walking with him in every day of his life. And eventually God is like, hey, we're going for a walk and we're just never coming back. That God just took him because of the closeness that he had because he knew Enoch's heart and he just simply took him. You see that same type of idea in 2 Kings chapter 2 where Elijah the prophet is there and God's going to be there and Elijah goes out on a walk and Elisha's with him and all of a sudden a chariot comes down, separates the two of them and God simply just takes him on into heaven because he wanted to be with him. It'd be a wonderful idea, you know, a wonderful thing to experience to see that God just said, look, I want you to be with me. Genesis chapter 6, a world full of violence. A world full of constant evil. Nobody else is doing right. We look around in our society and we think there's, uh, you know, obviously we have a number of problems and a number of challenges. There was no chance in Noah's day to get an auditorium of anybody to acknowledge God in any way. But it said, but Noah walked with God. And that made all of the difference throughout the rest of time. So you have individuals that you can see that we're walking with God. You see the idea that God is wanting to be with us. And when we start to think about that, we start to think about our walk with him. To complete a walk, you have to start it. Many of us here today have already started a walk with God. We've made a decision that I want to go with him. Well, as you start that walk, you have to make the right steps. You have to go and make sure you're staying on course. And then you have to make sure that you finish it to completion. You can't stop whenever you go. Now, that's a simple thing to say is to walk with God. Start, keep walking, and make sure you go into the end. But our walk with God is not one that's always easy. 
Charles Hodge wrote a book uh, said, uh, that was entitled My Daily Walk with God. He came to Graymere at a, at a, uh, uh, a conference a few years back, and I remember seeing him. Uh, after preaching for 50 years, and he had reached the age of retirement, he said this, Trying to maintain a daily walk with God has been my biggest failure. He says, religion has not come easily for me. We say this idea and we come together and say, look, we want to walk with God and that's what we are all here striving to do. But to act as if it's simple, to act like it's something that, hey, every day I get up and every day I nail it, every day I go through and do exactly what God wants me to do, every day I feel close to him is not what you will see in reality. So I would say if, you, if you're here today and you don't feel good about your walk with God today, I want to let you in on a little bit of secret. Walking with God through this life does not always look the way that you think it should. How would I prove that point? I would say simply walk through Scripture. Walk through the stories of the individuals that God has portrayed to us. Those that had a walk with Him, but in so many ways they failed. When we, walk, when we think about this, a lot of times we look at Enoch or we look at Elijah, these individuals that just walked with God and they were no more. And we think, man, that's not anything that I can really relate to. That's not something that I'm going to be able to accomplish in any way. But we fail to remember the walks of Moses and the walks of Paul. Moses is the one that has spent 40 years of his life as a fugitive. He was a murderer. He took somebody else's life trying to defend someone else and has to run for his life. And then God's going to eventually come to him much later on in his life. And we're going to study about him tonight. But he comes to him much later on and says, okay, now I'm ready for you to go. You think of Paul who was Saul and what's he done? He's persecuted the church. He doesn't believe in Jesus. He is vehemently against him. He's against him in every way until Jesus appears to him. And his walk with God was one of all this huge valley or an exactly total direction change in life. So as we think about our walk with God, sometimes we, we read individually, we don't really sit back and think about what happens in a walk with God. There's a lot of peaks and there's going to be a lot of valleys. There's a lot of different trails and different journeys that people are on. Whenever you think about doing that, you see that God uses so many people that have had difficult walks. Think about King David. We think about David fighting Goliath. As a young man, he's a national hero. He has defeated one of their great enemies and everybody thinks, man, he's up and coming. He becomes king and he's given great victory so many ways in life and he has so many things going for him. He's a conquering king as a young man only to collapse and to give into the temptation of adultery and deal with the aftermath of that so much later on in life. He was still going to be a man after God's own heart even though he had done so many things that none of us would choose on our walk. But what did he do? He had a heart that would turn back to God. So as we start to think about this month, this idea of walking with God, there's a lot of different aspects. But today what I want us to do is I want us to consider right now where you are with your walk. Where are you with your, with your walk with God right now? And that's going to be a personal question for all of us to consider. But if you don't ever sit there and say, where am I? What is my situation? How am I in relationship to God right now? How would you rate that walk? Because one thing I want to tell you today, and as we go through this month, I think we'll see it time and again about our God is wherever you are, whatever your answer is, however you would rate it, I want you to know that God would want, wants to be with you right now. He wants to bless you. That's what God wants. He wants to protect you. He wants to guide you. He wants to comfort you. If you're in the midst of pain, he wants to strengthen you. Ultimately, what does he do? He wants to save you so that you can be with him. Now, the only one thing that he will not do is he won't drag you along. If you don't want to go with him, it's not like those children are now. We've got the whole, you know, almost the, the full harness and what's happening. We didn't have those when our kids were younger. But what happens? We're just dragging them along. Or it's that dog. And that dog has no interest in going on a walk. And you see somebody just tugging and tugging. Well, God doesn't play that game with us. God invites us into a relationship, but he asks us to come and to be with him, and that's so important. This walk is not all about discipline, even though it involves discipline. It's not all about a work of righteousness like you're going to accomplish it in and of yourself, but it does involve a great deal of work. It's about a beautiful walk with God where when somebody realizes that this world in a beautiful day like today is not an accident, 
That this world, as you look around and you look at your own life, say, only a creator could create what I see. Only a designer could put the design that I see in my life. When someone realizes that and understands that there is a God, and once they understand that he has revealed himself to us, that look, I want to walk in sync with the one who made me. You know that you can't find your own purpose in life because in and of yourself, you have no idea how to figure that out. The only way that you find the purpose is you go to the maker of an item and say, what was this made for? And that person, that inventor, that designer, that creator can say, this is what you were made for. Well, a walk with God is about seeking that. It's about getting those answers. It's about starting to understand this is what I really meant to do. This is what I was made for because the world has given me so many different types of answers. Well, once you believe in this life, it leads you to a different type of walk, and that's what we're going to talk about this month. Today in our time left, I want to emphasize one aspect of a successful walk with God. And that's one that I referenced even at the beginning of our lesson. That's our relationship with God through his word. Whenever it comes to your walk with God, it's not going to be one that you can just feel. It's not going to be one that all of a sudden the clouds are going to part and you're going to get that message. Your relationship with God is going to take some dedication on your part to look at what God has said, to understand his revealed word, and then to walk with it on a regular basis in your life. It's true to a successful walk with God. Uh, this morning, we're going to look at four different aspects of that interaction with God through his word, and we're going to try to identify some ways to put these things into practice. Now, if you were going to the Old Testament, here's a number of verses that you would see in the Old Testament where you see it time and again where God sort of emphasizes this idea. In Deuteronomy chapter uh, tw 10, verse 12, you see that he's coming. This is after Moses has already broken the Ten Commandments, broken the tablets, has written them again. And he comes now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God and to walk in all of his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the Lord's commandments and his statutes, which I am commanding you today for your good. We're going to be walking through the book of Exodus on Sunday nights for the next couple months. And what, one of the things that you're going to see is that God brings them out of a place of slavery, out of a place of not understanding what exactly his plan was for them, not understanding exactly what his purpose was for Israel. And as he gets them out of Egypt and all the things that were holding them back, they cross over. And what does he want to do? He wants to give them guidance. He wants to tell them how to live their life. He wants to tell them how to live a life that will be blessed, that will allow them to avoid all kinds of pitfalls and all kinds of problems. And he's setting them up where they can walk with him, but it's going to be in relation to what he's saying within his word. He's going to tell them in chapter 11, look, I want you to take these things I've told you, and I want you, I want you to teach your children. I want you to tell your sons and your daughters about these things that you've been told. Deuteronomy 26, you see, today declared the Lord to be your God. So these people had started that walk. And what is that going to look like? That you should walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments, and his ordinances. Time and again, you're going to see this walk in connection to what God has revealed. In the New Testament, you see the same thing. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Paul was talking to Timothy, and he says, look, you started this walk. He says, I want to remind you something. From your childhood, you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. He says, I want to remind you of how this walk that will end up leading you to the gates of heaven, I want to remind you where you learned that from and where you can find the information to be right there with God. Well, what are a few steps to walk with God through his word? Number one, you have to accept it completely. Joshua chapter 22, Verse 5, Joshua here is speaking to Reuben and to Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh. They're about to go on the other side of the Jordan, but he, he uses this phrase that he talks to, and I want to break this verse in two as you look at it. He comes to them and he says, okay, you guys are going to go on the other side of the river, but I want to remind you what this walk with God is like. He says, only be very careful to observe the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. Now, we would be tempted to stop right here and say, look, what you need to do is make sure you follow all of God's commandments. But I want to remind you that a walk with God is not just about a rule book. It wasn't just here are the commandments and you do these things. And, you know, some things we can go through and we can walk through life and do certain things a certain way. And I'm not even thinking about God. That's just the way I would do it anyways. 
And it wasn't going to be about this walk with God that I'm trying to see who he wants me to be. And we come here and say, look, here's just simply a rule book here. Figure out all the rules, read all the rules, follow all the rules, and that's what it's about. Well, we don't stop there. And Joshua doesn't stop there either. As you complete the verse, look at what he says happens once you start to see God's word and connect it with the walk that you would have with him. He says this, observe the commandments that the Lord commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Really kind of echoes the type thing whenever Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? Well, I want you to love God with everything that you have. Well, when you start seeing a relationship between what God has said, what he is, how he has directed us, how he wants to walk, well, how am I going to walk with him? I'm going to walk according to what he has told me. Why? Because he's the creator. He's the designer. He's the one that has the answers. I'm not going to try to figure out my own answers. I'm going to submit to what he wants. With each one of these things, we're going to sort of talk about these four different things that we want to do with God's word. But then I wanted to make it really practical for us. How do you do it? Well, how do you accept God's word completely? For many of us, uh, this is easy. Many of us, that's what's already in our hearts and mind. But for newcomers, this is not one that's easy to simply accept God's word. You might be here this morning, you've got questions about the Bible. Well, if you're going to accept it completely, and that's what it's going to take for you to be able to serve God, you can't serve God and say, well, I'm not going to do it based on this book because you don't have any answers. But maybe you're here this morning and you're thinking, well, I've got questions. Then ask them. I'm wondering about some discrepancies or some things that really, I don't know, really bother me. Don't walk around with those questions. Come and ask them. Ask me at any time. Make sure to come to Bible class. Ask different folks. The elders are meeting every, after every morning service. You can meet with the elders. You got some questions about things when it comes to the Bible. Find the answers. Don't walk through life with a bunch of doubts that you're not trying to figure out. The answers are there. We'd be happy to help you with them. But to accept God's word, you have to ask those type of questions. And I think that's so important because there's a lot of people that will attack God's word. But know that if you're going to walk with God, you're going to have to come to decide this is his word. It proves itself time and again, but everybody has questions. Make sure that you ask those and get them answered. The second thing that I would say when it comes to our relationship with God and his word is make sure that you access it daily. Make this a part of your daily habit. We know that our thoughts are so very important. What we're thinking about in our heart, as we think in our mind, that's so many times what we're going to become. Why? Because our thoughts lead to our actions. Your actions eventually are going to start to make your habits, and your habits are really going to determine what your character is, isn't it? So you sit there and think about what am I putting into my mind? So as we ask ourselves this morning, how often are you thinking about God? Did you only think about God this morning? Well, it's Sunday morning, we're going to get together and go to worship, and that's when you thought about him. I hope that's not the case. That's not the kind of walk that God wants to have. I hope that we think about him a little more often. How often do you think at him of God? Is it just at night before bed, or maybe it's for a meal? Uh, do you just think about God whenever there's hard times, and all of a sudden you, you, you have things out of control and, and you need help? Is that when you think about God? Whenever you know somebody else that needs prayers, okay, well, I'll think about praying to God whenever I have something that somebody else is dealing with or that I'm dealing with, and therefore I'll ask him to give me some help. Is that your walk with God? If that's the case, it kind of sounds like something that happens quite frequently whenever you have a teenager at home and they're running a little low on funds. What happens? Well, we're going out, going to do all this, and they come, and they don't have any money, but we're going to go to the movies, and oh, here they are, and you give them the money, and then they say, thank you, Mom and Dad, that is so awesome. Will you come and watch the movie with me and my friends? It'll be great. We can all spend this. Yeah. We don't do that. Uh, now, that's okay. You don't have to take your parents to the movies. That's not what I'm telling you this morning. But that's not the kind of walk that God wants. That's not what we do with God. We don't come and say, hey, look, I want you to give me all of these things and then I'm going to go about my life afterwards. That's not what he's looking for. What he wants is every day for us to be with him, for us to be thinking about him, 
Because as we think about him, as we think about his word, as we think about the things that he's given us, see, that's going to change what we do on an everyday basis. And that's so important for us as we access it daily. What does God want? He wants us to think about him first thing in the, mor- first thing in the morning. He wants us to think about him as we go through our day. He wants us to tell other people about the guidance that he's given. And look, I've been thinking about these things. This is what I've read. And I want you to know how you can be blessed as well. He wants our lives to reflect that when people look at us, they see somebody who is walking with the maker. What does that do? That lets our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who's in heaven. Well, how can we get our mind on that? By looking at God's word every day. One beautiful way that we allow God to be a part of our daily walk is to listen to his word and to give him our attention all the time throughout the day. What's the scripture tell us? 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 tells us to be diligent to present ourselves approved to God as a workman who doesn't need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. He says, look, whenever it comes to looking at God's word, I want you to be diligent. Other versions would say study to make sure that you can be approved to God. He says, look, I want to walk with you. I want you to be an approved worker. But what I need you to do is give diligence to see what I want you to do in life. Because a walk with God is going to be a walk based on the truth. Not the world's truth, not on my self-made up truth, but on the truth of what God has said. God's word is our standard. Well, if that's going to be our standard, what do we need to do? We need to go back time and again and look at it and make sure we know what it says to make sure we're doing all that we can to walk with God according to the way that he wants us to. John chapter 4 verse 6, as John is a... Uh, At the end of his life, he's an older elder and he's writing to the church and he says, I was very glad to find some of your children walking in truth, just as we receive the commandment to do from the Father. This is John who is going to share with us Jesus' prayers. He's in Gethsemane where he's praying to God, please sanctify them, set them apart by truth. Your word is truth. And he says, man, I'm so glad as he's looking back at this church to say that I hear that so many of you are walking in truth. And he says, this is love. This is what loving God is, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you've heard from the beginning, that you should walk in it. So see, there's this connection there that as we see what God's word says, and as we look at it on a regular basis, we're going to learn what is true. We can start to practice what is true, and we can make a difference, but we have to look at it on a daily basis. Well, to walk in this truth, we have to open it up daily. How can you do it? It was really neat at the beginning of the year to see a lot of our different reading plans that we had set out be taken. Many of you grabbed different reading plans. Maybe it was reading through the Bible in a year. Maybe it was reading through the New Testament, reading through it in different ways. We put out a number of Bibles that were here that had been donated that were free, and those Bibles all disappeared. That's exciting to me. Because you know what I know? If you take God's word and you decide right now that, look, I'm going to make a decision to give myself to looking at this book on a regular basis. God's going to bless you. He's going to touch your life. He's going to change your mind. When he changes your mind, he's going to change your actions. When your actions change, you're going to be blessed in this life and the next. And people started to make some decisions along those lines. If you're looking at how to do it, you can do it with those different sheets. Or man, there's so many apps today on your phone. You get a Bible app and you sit there. They've got plans for whatever you're looking for. If you're going through hardships, you bring up a U, U version on your phone and you can put in a plan and it's already set up for you. You can check it, it'll remind you, it will allow you to do that. To access it daily, use the technology you have to remind yourself, I need to spend some time with God's word. Think about the location of your Bible. I hope your Bible's not on a shelf gathering dust. I hope you've got a Bible that you know where it is and where it's gonna be. If not, go get one. Best investment you'll ever make. It's okay to buy a new Bible every now and then. And what do you do? Where do you place it? Uh, If you put your Bible, some people would come and at the, you know, whenever they're leaving in the morning, they're going to put their Bible on top of their pillow because before I get in bed, I'm going to grab that book and I'm going to read it. Maybe that's where you need to put it. Maybe it needs to be on the kitchen table so that as you're getting up in the morning before I grab anything else or the newspaper or my phone or reading or watching another show, I'm going to sit down and read it. You want to make sure you touch your Bible every day, just put your phone down and then put your Bible on top of it. You'll touch your Bible every day. Well, where are you putting it? Put it in a place that you'll find it and read it and look at it. Now, it's going to take discipline and it's going to make a decision. But again, as you do that, you have to access it daily. Number three, 
When it comes to God's word, I want to challenge you to allow it to sink in. Allow it to sink in, to dwell on it internally. What we put into our minds changes us. It's one thing to hear something and again they're walking by and you just hear some noise or even sometimes as you're reading it, you can read through and you get done with a page like, I don't even know what I just read. What happened? I didn't really stop and think. And sometimes we think, I want to read a certain number of chapters and that might not be what's best for you. What you may need to do is find something that you can sit back and just spend a little time thinking about. Why? Because of the power of what you think. Throughout the history of man, you see the power of words. Germany, during World War II, had a leader that could motivate and build people up because he was an unbelievable communicator. The problem is they were listening to the wrong words and it led to great horrors. England is totally, you know, by themselves. Europe has been taken over. Germany is coming and bombing them for weeks on time, but they had someone who was speaking them words of hope. And Winston Churchill is telling them, we're going to fight on the beaches. We're going to do everything that we can. A thousand years from now, someone will say, this is our nation's finest hour. And those words made people hold on. We see that all kinds of time when in our movies. We love watching these movies and what happened. The coach is in there and he's giving a, a, a big pep talk. Maybe it's Newt Rotney saying, win one for the Gipper. We're going way back on that one. Denzel Washington, remember the Titans? What are they doing? They're giving a speech. They're giving you words. And what happens? People get up and they live differently because of the words that they were given. Well, what do we have to do? We have to let these words sink into our minds. I don't know if any of you watched football last weekend or not. And if you watched the end of the Bills and the Chiefs game, you saw something that was just totally ridiculous on the back and forth and then the eventual winner. It's coming to the end of the game. The Bills have gone down, they've scored, they've taken the lead by three, there's 13 seconds left, the game is over. You know, it's kickoff and 13 seconds, what are you going to do? And Andy Reid was there and went to his quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, and as he comes in, he walks in and says, well, things look grim. Be the grim reaper. Patrick Mahomes looks at him, I'm in. Goes out there, passes for 42 yards in two plays, 13 seconds, kicks a field goal. Eventually, it leads to a win. What was happening? One moment in time where you need that right word to be and to do what you need to do. And when you see great things at a high level, you have people that have that encouragement and that word at that moment. God wants to give you that word at that moment that you need it most for hope, or for strength, or for wisdom, but you gotta be with him. You gotta start thinking, do I have enough of what God has said within me to have the answer at that moment in time? The clouds are not gonna part, he's not gonna speak to you audibly out loud. He says, look, I've given you everything you need that pertains to life and godliness. I've given you my word that is inspired by me. It will make you equipped to do everything you need to do. But what are we gonna have to do? We have to have it within our heart so it is there at the moment that we need it. We have to allow it to sink in. So I ask you, how is God going to do that today? He is going to give it to you through his word. Psalm 1, we read it at the beginning of our uh, lesson. Did you see what he said this man was doing? He's talking about how blessed is this individual. Verse 2, he says, His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. See, that's the letting it sink in. That's the more than just passing through, but I'm going to sit there and see what can I do to take this into my mind and into my heart. The blessed man listens to God's law. He meditates on it, and he thinks about it. We need to hear God's words. And just as all of these speeches and different lines that you've heard in movies or different things that people have said to you that have made a huge difference in your life, you need God's word to be that now. Well, how can you do it? Number one, I would encourage you to memorize different verses of God's Word. Our Youth for Christ program's out here and we got packets and they've got 50 verses and you can go through and spend the time to memorize those verses. Doesn't take much time. But I want to challenge you to think about what of God's Word do I want? Because again, you may not have your Bible on you. You may not know exactly where something is. But once you've memorized something, 
It starts to stay within your mind and it's going to be there whenever you need it. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. When you repeat something in your mind and you sit there and say, well, I've heard that before. I've seen that before. I've thought about that before. When you put God's word into your mind, it will change it. Now, maybe for you, you need to sit there and just have a verse that's really the one that's important to you. Write it on a note card and put it up in your room. Put it on a post-it note and put it on the mirror. Have sit there where God's word is around you. And for you, it might be one a week or one a month. But you're going to put different things up where you want, look, oh, we want our house to think about this idea. And when you do it, all of a sudden, now you're putting things in your pocket. You're putting things in your mind that you can carry with you everywhere you go. God's word wants to be that to you. But find it and put it in your mind. Search for answers for God's word. And as you have questions, allow it to challenge you. Seek out those things. Don't just go, oh, well, I don't know about that. Do a little de deeper research. Make sure that you're involved in putting God's word in your heart. Final thought this morning for us on what we should do with God's word in our walk with him is I want to encourage you to actively share it. Uh, if you had this kind of walk with God that like what you see described in Psalms 1 and you're blessed and life is going good and it's helped your family and it's helped your interactions with other people and you start to see, you know what, this, this walk works. God has been blessing my life. He's blessed my relationships. He's blessed my jobs. He's, blessed, he's given me peace in difficult times. He's given me strength. These things that really in life that are really putting pressure on me, they don't overwhelm me because he's there with me. How could you have that walk with him and then not tell somebody else about it? Jeremiah is a prophet, as you look in the Old Testament, one of the biggest books in all of Scripture. And he's about this prophet that God's coming and he's giving him a message. And the message that Jeremiah has to share with people is a difficult message because he says God's judgment is coming. Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. He's called the weeping prophet because what he has gotten from God is, I've got to tell people, look, that does not work. That is not right. This is wrong. And people didn't really want to hear it. And as you look in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, he basically gets to a point in his life. He's like, I'm tired of telling other people because nobody else is listening and nobody else wants to hear it. They're mocking me. They're making me a derision daily. They're constantly putting me down because of that. And he said, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to hold it in. But as he sat there and thought about what God had given him and thought about God's word within him, this is what he said. He said, I will not remember him or speak any more in his name. Then in my heart, it became like a burning fire shut up in my bones and I'm weary of holding it in and I can't endure it. He sort of made a decision, look, I know what God's word says, but I'm not going to share it anymore. But he says, there's something about putting this into your life that makes it where I can't not share it. I can't not share it. I know these things, and I know that this would help. I know that this would be a blessing. I know that this is the answer. I know this is what the designer, I know what the creator has said, and I've got to share it with other people. But what do we have to have? We have to have it within us. Do you have enough within you? to start a fire to help other people that you work with, that you live with, that are part of your daily life with God's message. The more you help others walk with God, the closer you will walk with him. If you want to love, learn to love God more and his word more, take advantage to share that opportunity with other people. And what you'll see is other people say, this is what I was looking for all along and you'll be blessed. This week on Facebook, a memory popped up on mine that was whenever the elders in 2014 came and had asked me to uh, preach twice a month in that year. And I put out whatever type of announcement, that memory came up. At the time, I think I had kids like 5 to 13 years old, four boys at the house, working at CEA and was teaching and coaching. And, you know, frankly, I thought, man, I've got a lot of different stuff. Uh, I, I wanted to do that. I was excited about that. But man, that's going to be that much more time on putting something in. If only I knew how big a blessing that would be to my life. I could have never painted what God has painted for me in my opportunity to look at his word, to study his word on a regular basis, that that has led to me being here and having an opportunity to see it nonstop. I wish every person could experience the life that I get to live where I have the opportunity to sit there and just dig into God's word in depth on a regular basis. I feel blessed above all else. But if I could wish anything for you this morning, 
It would be that you would do what you can in your station of life, wherever you are walking, to put it in there. Because God will bless you just as much. Some are going to teach. Some are going to preach. Some are going to just see God's Word and their life will be the most beautiful sermon it could ever be and it's going to be more effective than anything else I could say because when we put God's Word into our life, when we accept it completely, when we look at it daily, when we allow it to really sink into where it shows up, then all of a sudden other people will see your life. They will be blessed as they watch you be blessed by God. Well, how do you do it? Tactively shared, I would just say, say yes to opportunities. We've got our involvement forms that have been going around. I know a lot of people have been out of pocket. But as you click on that involvement form, can you share that with other people? We need more teachers, not less. We need folks to be involved in doing that. I think there's a group today meeting after worship about those going to the City Children Mission Trip. To go on a mission trip is a great way to actively share it. But as you're doing these things, if you're doing the first three, you're going to have something within you. Read that verse and find that thing that you're memorizing and think, okay, today I'm going to read God's Word to find something that I want to mention to somebody. I'm sharing this verse that I'm thinking about this week. I've started trying to memorize it, but now I'm looking for an opportunity at school, on the team, with my class, with my family, with my children, with my grandchildren, where I can share God's Word. And what happens? You will be blessed. In your daily readings, look for that opportunity. I love seeing a member, many of our members like Roberta Bolton, uh, Linda Kirkendall, Pat Hill. On Facebook, sometimes it's just a verse. And as I'm going through, leading all the other things the world's seeing, you just see God's word. What a great way just to share God's verse. And what a great way to allow yourself uh, to make a difference for other people. You find your best way and you share it with other people. Well, I hope these things can challenge you. I hope that it'll help your walk. I hope that this month, as we continue to consider that, we will all get to a place where we're walking closer to him in every way. God's word is a key, key way to make that happen. Now, obviously, we said with any good walk, you have to start it. Are you ready to start a walk with God this morning? If you've not yet come in front of others and confess Jesus Christ, he asks you to confess him. He says, that's how you're going to start. If you haven't decided, look, the world's been saying this, I'm repenting of my sin and turning back to God, you haven't started yet. If you haven't come and said, what I want to be is to be buried with Jesus Christ, to have my sins washed away so I can rise up to walk in newness of life, then you haven't started yet. That's what we want to invite you to do. Come and decide, I want to be a Christian. Maybe you need to talk about that a little bit more. Then ask those questions. Let us have those conversations. Get started on your walk. But maybe you're here this morning and you just need some help along those lines. God wants to bless you. His word will bless you. But the church family is how we can bless each other. If we can pray with you and pray for you, we want to do that as well. If we can help you in any way, we invite you to come as we stand and as we sing.